Bright and scorching sun times lonely sinking in the wilderness during Su Tao's high school years, there was someone she really liked. After pursuing them for three years, they finally agreed. He is a gentle gentleman and considerate in every way. Having been in love for four years, on the occasion of graduating from college, Su Tao proposed to her, thinking that her years of hard work had finally paid off. But I didn't expect his white moonlight to return to China. On the night before getting married, he forced her into a corner, holding a knife against the red mole at the end of her eye. He squeezed her chin hard, his eyes almost crazy, his voice different from the gentle and low voice of the day, tearing apart. Su Tao, why do you think I accepted you? It's just because your mole looks like her. Now that she's back, you don't deserve to have this mole anymore. That day, Su Tao ran away on a rainy night but died in a car accident. Before she died, she saw someone stumbling towards her, the once solitary and indifferent young man. When she woke up again, Su Tao was reborn. She decided to stay away from the scumbag and focus solely on studying to change the future outcome of her family's bankruptcy. But the gloomy and lonely young man later devoutly knelt down on one knee in front of her, Su Su, I am willing to do anything for you, as long as you give me a glance. Asterisk Jiang Chihuai had only one wish in her past life, hoping that Su Tao would be happy, but she ended up with a tragic ending. But later this wish came true in this life. Keywords of the novel Peach Mist Bubble No Pop-Ups, Peach Mist Bubble TXT Complete Collection Download, Latest Chapter Reading of Peach Mist Bubble Chapter 1 Seven Year Jokes You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Seven Year Jokes The news of Su Tao's upcoming marriage to Yu Ijo has spread throughout the entire Cloud City. Everyone says that two people are talented and beautiful, and their perfect match is made in heaven and earth. Su Tao also thinks so. The salesperson of the wedding dress shop generously praised the person in front of her, saying, Mrs. Yu is truly a natural beauty. No matter which set of wedding dresses, they are so beautiful. Su Tao couldn't help but be overjoyed by her words from Mrs. Yu, and covered her lips with a light smile, saying, Every bride hopes to show their best looks on their wedding day. The salesperson outside the fitting room took her phone in and said, Mrs. Yu, you have a call. Su Tao glanced at the caller ID and saw that it was her best friend Chen Weima calling. As soon as she answered, the other end of the phone hurriedly spoke, Taozi, wasn't you Ijo there when you picked out your wedding dress? Su Tao explained, he said there's something urgent, let me try first, and then send him photos to see. Humph, no wonder, Chen Weima sneered disdainfully, Bai Yueguang returned to China today and hurriedly went to the airport to pick him up. He probably received him by now. What white moonlight! Su Tao instinctively tightened her five fingers as she held her phone. Why haven't I heard of it? Don't you know? Chen Weima's anger grew even stronger, and his volume increased a few degrees. I thought the whole circle knew that he had an unforgettable white moonlight for many years. How dare you keep it all in the dark? She continued angrily, it's Ning Shushue, the girl who was known as the piano goddess before you came to Beichuan No. 1 Middle School. She's one year older than us and studied abroad before we entered high school. Yu Ijo has been in love with her for many years. Chen Weima became more and more angry as he spoke. Before he could finish his meal, he urgently called and angrily knocked on the bowl with his chopsticks. This bastard is getting married, and he's still going to see the white moonlight at this time. I don't think he cares about you at all. Feeling the other end of the phone in silence, Chen Weima's aura weakened halfway and he cautiously probed, Peach, are you okay? Su Tao took a sniff and suppressed the sourness in her heart as she flipped several times. I'm fine. Just picking up the plane, shouldn't it be anything, right? She actually knows everything, but she is still comforting herself, maybe it's just meeting an old friend. He'll be back soon. Peach. Chen Wei Ma sighed lightly, do you think the wedding can still proceed smoothly? Su Tao remained silent for a while, then turned to look at herself in the mirror, 
her eyes turning red, completely devoid of the bride-to-be's joy. I don't know. If you want me to say it, you have to make it clear to him that if this marriage is to be married, he will completely cut off contact with Ning Shushua. If it's not to be married, we'll change to a different man. What kind of man doesn't have a beautiful woman like Taozi? Chen Wei Ma is Su Tao's only comfort now, always maintaining a united front with her. Su Tao forced a smile in front of the mirror and said, I'll ask him clearly when he comes back. Asterisk Yuijo escorted Ning Shushua back to the hotel. As she was about to leave, her boneless body pressed tightly against her. Ah Zhou, can you? Don't leave. The white moonlight, who had been separated for many years, now surrendered to him and froze stiffly all over Ijo. Su Tao waited until late at night, but he had not yet seen the figure of Yuijo returning. Just a second before my eyes closed, there was a sound of the door lock being twisted. She sat up in surprise and stepped forward to welcome her. When she smelled the strange perfume, Su Tao suddenly stopped. She just stopped for a moment and then turned to the shoe cabinet, I'll help you get your shoes. Yu Yi Zhou looked at her coldly and then sneered, Su Tao, do you still want to pretend to be foolish even if you know where I went? A lightning bolt suddenly flashed across the sky, illuminating the dimly lit room for a moment. Su Tao also saw his cold expression clearly. Unlike the past tenderness and tenderness, Yuijo's gaze at her was only indifferent. Su Tao felt a chill in her heart and smiled awkwardly, Are you going to take a shower? I'll go get you hot water. As she turned around, her wrist was tightly gripped, and then her back hit the shoe cabinet at the entrance heavily. The hard corners of the cabinet made her lose half of her consciousness. In the past, whenever Su Tao shouted that she was uncomfortable, he would ask her heartache what was wrong, but this time he only stared coldly at her bright red eyes. Chen Wei Ma should have told you about me and Xu Xue. Xu Xue. Even exclaimed that she was so intimate, and from beginning to end, she only had Su Tao. Su Tao suppressed the tears flowing in her eyes, her voice trembling as she said, so you want to cancel the engagement. From the moment I saw her again, your identity has come to an end, Yuijo fiercely grabbed her chin and wiped the mole under her eyelids with his thumb. Su Tao, why do you think I accepted you? It's just because your mole looks like her. Now that she's back, you don't deserve to have this mole anymore. Su Tao watched as he picked up the Swiss military knife she had entrusted someone to buy from abroad, and the sharp blade pressed against the end of her eye. Ijo, please, don't do this. She desperately retreated, but behind her was only the cold wall. I can withdraw, please don't touch it. Only she deserves this mole, you don't deserve it. Yu Ijo turned a deaf ear to her pleading, and his subordinate strength intensified. The sharp blade sliced through the fair skin, and blood flowed out. He didn't think it was enough, so he stubbornly cut Su Tao's eyelids a few times with the tip of his knife. Blood mixed with tears flowed over the back of his hand. Yu Ijo released his hand in disgust, threw away his knife, and drew a few pieces of paper to wipe it. Su Tao sat down on the ground, with a mix of pain on her face and suffocation in her heart. Her strength seemed to have been drained, and her eyes were empty. Give you one night to pack up and leave here. Yu Ijo didn't look at her again, opened the door and left straight away. The rain outside did not diminish at all, and the wind, carrying a chill, surged into the door that had never been closed, awakening her chaotic consciousness. Su Tao stood up unsteadily, holding on to the shoe cabinet, and walked into her carefully decorated wedding room. The eyes were filled with festive red, but now it has become a joke. She only took the necklace that Su Mu secretly gave her from the drawer, and when she looked up, she saw the right half of her face covered in blood and lifeless eyes in the mirror. Su Tao put on her necklace and left their wedding room empty-handed. She walked aimlessly in the rainstorm, and her whole face was numb because the wound was mixed with the rain. A Bentley was parked at a traffic light intersection, and the secretary in the passenger seat respectfully asked the dignified man in the back seat, Mr. Jiang, the mayor has invited you to dinner with Qianjin tonight. 
I pushed it. Good Jiang Chihui supported his chin with one hand and casually looked out the window, but when he saw the figure on the road, he suddenly sat up straight. The secretary followed his gaze and said, Mr. Jiang, do you know him? When Su Tao reached the center of the road, her stomach throbbed and her eyes turned black. The sound in her ears dissipated in an instant, leaving only a buzzing sound like an electric current. After the continuous honking, a piercing break sound tore through the rain curtain. Jiang Chihui watched as the person who was thinking day and night fell like a butterfly with folded wings, disregarding his secretary's obstruction and rushing into the heavy rain. Su Tao's gaze blurred as she saw a figure stumbling towards her, carefully picking up her blood-covered body. Her body and mind, which had been cold all night, briefly felt warmth as he approached. Before her consciousness dissipated completely, she heard the sorrowful and low pleading voice of the person. Su Su, please take another look at me. CP Title Naughty corresponds to the titles of Tao and Chi in the book. Don't whiten scumbags. Pi Cha Hui's lifelong promotion. New book seeking recommendation ticket collection comments. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Return to Senior High School. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 2 Return to Senior High School, Peaches, Peaches. The familiar female voice pulled Su Tao's thoughts back, and the scene before her gradually became clear. The person who made her hate her out of love was looking at her with a soft gaze and asking with concern, What's wrong? What else is going on? He approached step by step with a gloomy face, saying that she couldn't compare to the white moonlight and didn't pretend like she did now. It was really disgusting. To go to heaven and see his face, it seems that she didn't do enough good deeds in her previous life. Peach, are you still delivering your milk? Chen Wei Ma leaned forward with a wicked smile and lowered his voice. You've been staring at him for a long time. Su Tao saw that her good friend's appearance was no different from when she was in high school, and only then did she realize that she was in the classroom. Her heart was shocked, and an impossible guess emerged. Has she been reborn? Su Tao lowered her eyes and remembered that she would bring hot milk to Yuijo every morning. She was standing at his table now, holding warm milk in her hands. Now that Su Tao sees Yuijo's face, she will recall the scene of him holding a knife and viciously cutting her tear stains on her face. Su Tao is a beautiful woman in Yuncheng who is surrounded by stars and the moon. Her apricot eyes are like spring, especially the dark red tear mole under her eyelids, which is the most beautiful feature. There is another rumor in Yuncheng. If I could kiss Su Tao's mole, I would be willing to go up in poverty and fall into the underworld. Unfortunately, such a beautiful woman is still infatuated and has been pursuing Ijo for a full three years before the other party agrees. I thought that after four years of dating, he would eventually achieve success, but on the day before their wedding, his white moonlight returned to his home country. When she was pressed down on her chin and fiercely cut off the mole she was proud of, she realized that these seven years were just a joke. Perhaps the hatred in her heart was too strong, and Su Tao's strength unconsciously increased. Then Chen Wei Ma let out a loud exclamation of shock. Su Tao forcefully squeezed the milk packaging box and opened it facing the boat, splashing warm milk all over his face. Seeing that gentle face covered in sticky milk, Su Tao felt a refreshing sensation in her heart. Reasonably tell her that it's not yet time to laugh out loud, she needs to tear off the hypocritical mask of this scumbag step by step. Su Tao pretended to be panicked and exclaimed, quickly pushing Chen Weima, is there any paper at the end? After being stunned for a moment, Chen Weima touched his pocket and took out a crumpled piece of paper with the KFC logo printed in the lower right corner. Su Tao saw Yu Ijo's fleeting disdain for the piece of paper and secretly despised it. He didn't have that wealth and fortune, but he had a young master who was sick. If it weren't for the Su family dedicating all their efforts to help him in his past life, he wouldn't have achieved the fame of Cloud City later on. She didn't mean to answer in one boat, taking the tissue that had been ravaged by Chen Weima countless times and covering his face. 
Sorry, I didn't mean to. I don't know if Su Tao's strength is too strong, or the material of the paper is too rough, causing a sharp pain in Yui Zhou's face. Su Tao's voice carried the softness of the Jiangnan water town. As soon as she spoke, half of the restlessness and anger in Yi Zhou's heart dissipated in an instant. He took a deep breath in secret, and after she took off the paper, he regained his usual gentleness. Thank you, Su. Su Tao felt a moment of confusion when she heard his address. When she was chasing him, she thought about giving up many times, but unfortunately, with his gentle words from Su, all her unwillingness would turn into motivation. She wants him to change his way of addressing herself and become more intimate. Su Tao used to often hear people say behind her back that she was a licking dog. At that time, she just felt like she liked someone and wanted to have a future with them. What's wrong with that? Looking back on the methods of chasing him with all my heart and soul, I fell in love for seven years until I had nothing at all, which was even a failure to live like a licking dog. Su Tao suppressed the surging hatred in her heart and smiled at Yui Zhou 111, I'll bring you milk tomorrow. She pulled Chen Weima, who was watching the excitement, back to her seat, and the latter leaned over gossipily, rubbing against Su Tao's arm. Taozi, he has already tacitly agreed for you to help him wipe his face. The next step may be to kiss and hold him high. Oh, if she had the strength to lift him up, she would definitely throw him off the rooftop and make him fall into a puddle of mud. When Su Tao wiped his face for him, she wished she could use his previous life strength to double the pain she had suffered and return it to him. She instinctively stroked the mole on her upper and lower eyelids, smooth and transparent, without the blood flowing all over her face like in her previous life. The heart-wrenching pain is still vivid in my memory. Su Tao tightly grasped her chest, the deep pain pressing down on her, making her unable to breathe. Taozi, the teacher called you. The worried call from Chen Weima beside her took her out of the immersed grief and anger. She regained her senses and only then noticed that the class teacher on the podium was scrutinizing her harshly. Li Xiao was the homeroom teacher of class 18. Despite being over 50 years old, he still had an imposing demeanor. With just a gentle glance of his eyes behind his reading glasses, the students who received attention would tremble. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Like the King of Death You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Like the King of Death Rao is someone like Su Tao, who has seen great storms in her past life, but when it comes to teaching, she still subconsciously feels awe. She felt a tingling sensation on her scalp and silently straightened her spine. I'm sorry, teacher. I was a bit distracted just now. What did you ask me for? Li Xiaoxian spoke in an almost commanding tone, today there will be a new classmate coming over. After class, you can go to the school gate to pick him up. As the monitor of class 18, you have the obligation to entertain the new classmate. Su Tao has no room for rejection, she can only settle for it. The position of class monitor was parachuted to her, and she had originally applied for it as a literary and artistic commissar. After thinking about running for the class committee and returning home, her parents looked pleased and asked her, Tao Tao, did you become the class monitor? Su Tao only then realized that the position that others were eager to run for was easily won by her parents with just one sentence, so Li Xiao had always had a strong opinion of her. After all, no teacher would like a student who goes through the back door, especially a class monitor like her who falls behind in grades. But she remembers that there was no transfer of students in her previous life. Although there were indeed transfer students in her class later on, they came quietly. Chen Weima still mentioned that the transfer students were quite handsome, and Su Tao turned around and noticed that a boy was sitting in the corner at some point. In Su Tao's impression, he is always gloomy and gloomy. Occasionally turning her head to meet him, the fierce gaze in his eyes always startled her for a while. Later, Yui Zhou told her that the transfer student had stolen the gold watch given by his uncle and asked her to stay away from the transfer student. Su Tao has always listened to Yui Zhou's words and has been avoiding transfer students since then. 
But until now, she still doesn't remember his name and only heard of him at the high school reunion that seemed to have achieved some success. But by that time, Su Tao and Yui Zhou had become a pair that everyone envied, and in her world, except for Yui Zhou, she showed no concern for anyone else. She sacrificed not only seven years of love for Yui Zhou, but also her connections and family. Except for Chen Weima, who had always been willing to stay by her side, others gradually distanced themselves from her after learning that the Su family was not lagging behind. At that time, Yui Zhou comforted her affectionately and said, It's okay, Su Tao. Others are not important, you and I are enough. Su Tao now only feels nauseous about those sweet words from her past life. He always pretends to unintentionally complain that she no longer has a background that can help him, and pretends that only he will always be by her side. Su Tao secretly cursed herself for being a love brain in her previous life, not realizing that she had been Pua. Throughout the whole class, she was immersed in the indignation of reflecting on her past mistakes. Chen Weima sat beside her, feeling the atmosphere around her becoming increasingly gloomy. Taozi, even if you don't want to pick up that transfer student, you shouldn't be so angry, right? Chen Weima looked at Li Xiaoxian on the stage and made sure he was facing the blackboard before approaching Su Tao. He whispered, you look like that despicable king of hell, with a face full of evil energy. Su Tao regained her senses and asked half doubtfully, is it really that scary? Chen Weima took out the small mirror he carried with him and handed it to her. If you don't believe me, look in the mirror, he said after being reborn, Su Tao saw her face for the first time again, still with a youthful appearance from her memory, but already with some shadows of a future charming beauty. How about it, is it the same as what I said? Su Tao even appreciated it and said, I am still as beautiful as ever. Chen Weima said, why didn't I realize you were so narcissistic before? A beautiful face should be used to be appreciated and praised. Su Tao has been looking at her mole, which is born under the eyelids and adds icing on the cake to this beautiful face. Students should have the appearance of students. Looking in the mirror during class makes them feel too pretty. Suddenly, there was a cold drink from the podium, and Su Tao slammed the mirror onto the table. She was thinking about explaining the wording, and Chen Weima spoke up to defend, she got something dirty in her eyes. Li Xiao sneered coldly and didn't say anything more, but the disdain in his expression was not concealed. Su Tao listened to him passionately continue reciting, Qin Yuan Spring Snow, and those years of forgotten knowledge gradually took shape. She had just passed the undergraduate entrance examination in her past life, and could only afford to attend an ordinary university. In order to compete with Yu Ijo in the same city, I chose a school with a poor reputation, so I didn't learn anything useful. Under the long-term brainwashing of Ijo, she felt that all she needed to do was to be responsible for her beautiful appearance. After obtaining her graduation certificate, she disregarded her family's opposition and got engaged to Yujo. The result was that her parents, who had loved her since childhood, were cold and indifferent to her, and she believed that relying on her own hands destroyed everything she had. Su Tao deeply realized that knowledge is the true essence of power. She dug out a brand new Chinese textbook from the pile of magazines and solemnly opened the first page. Chen Weima noticed her movements and lifted his face in shock from the comic book. Has the sun set in the west? Even Miss Su Tao, who usually idles around, remembers that she still has textbooks. Su Tao turned her face and stared at her with a burning gaze. In her previous life, Chen Weima was cheated out of all her money by a man because she was foolish and sweet. In this life, I want her to keep her eyes open and not pick up men from the trash. End of this chapter Chapter 4, Will You Study With Me? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4, Will You Study With Me? Su Tao glanced at Chen Weima's messy desktop, her eyebrows twitched, and she pushed her Chinese book towards the center. Let's watch together. Chen Weima stroked her forehead with concern, didn't you have a fever? Su Tao held her hand and earnestly urged, M-O-M-O, -M -O, will you study with me? 
Otherwise, in the future, she will still be as foolish as before, unaffected by knowledge, and anyone can deceive her. Chen Weima only felt that something was wrong with Su Tao today and nervously asked, Do you feel guilty and uneasy about being squeezed in a boat with a face full of milk? Do you want to use the most painful way to divert your attention? Upon hearing Yu Zhou's name, Su Tao unconsciously tightened her fingers as she pinched the pages of the book. The low dot quality paper sizzled and was torn off in part. Chen Wei Ma looked at her in shock and realized something. He apologized softly, it's my fault. I shouldn't bring up the embarrassing thing you did in front of him again. Su Tao calmed down and casually tugged at the corner of her mouth, it's okay, I don't care. She just couldn't help but recall the scene of Yu Ijo approaching her with a knife, temporarily suppressing hatred and unwillingness. Su Tao turned her gaze to the textbook and only calmed down when she smelled the smell of ink. Now, except for the air around Ijo, everything smells fresh and pleasant. The bell rang after class, and Li Xiao closed his book and looked at Su Tao. He was a bit surprised. I didn't expect her to be quite serious in class today. Li Xiaoxian's tone softened a bit. Su Tao, come here. She stood up immediately and said, Good teacher. However, Yu Ijo called out to her and said, Su Tao, you promised me that you would go to the bookstore to queue up for me to buy White Night Journey during break time. Maybe there might be another chance. Su Tao remembered that in her past life, she didn't go to pick up transfer students because of Yuijo. She knew he really liked Kigo Higashino's works, and today was the release day, with a limited edition of 1,000 copies, but the pre-order purchase volume reached 20,000. In her past life, Su Tao deliberately skipped class to queue up, but she missed the best lottery time because she took this class. She remembers that the sun was scorching that day, and the queue was so long that it covered the entire street. She didn't bring an umbrella and almost fainted in the scorching sun. Su Tao was very lucky to have just won the purchase qualification for the last book. When she happily took it and gave it to Yu Ijo, he didn't even say a word of thanks and hurriedly rushed to the express delivery office. Later, when she accidentally saw the content of the email he sent to Y Country on his computer, she realized that her intention was actually a joke. Su Tao didn't turn around, afraid that she would slap him when she saw his rightful expression. Sorry, I promised the teacher that I would go pick up a new classmate. You're also idle, why don't you go by yourself? She didn't answer in a boat, and quickly followed Li Xiaoxian who had left the classroom. Chen Weima stared blankly at Su Tao, who had resolutely left, and muttered to himself, It's strange. In the past, whenever it was related to Yuijo, Taozi would abandon everything in his hand regardless of everything. Chen Weima, do you know what's going on with Su Tao today? Yuijo stood up from his seat and ran straight towards him upon hearing his slightly urgent voice, she turned around and noticed that someone who usually only has a gentle expression had other emotions for the first time. Suddenly, she understood Su Tao's intention. It turned out to be playing to win. She's just fulfilling the duties of the class monitor, Chen Weima decided to help Su Tao, so he explained, after all, the class teacher has always been dissatisfied with her. I want to improve my impression. Yu Ijo breathed a sigh of relief and smiled warmly, thank you, I thought she was angry with me. Chen Weima was hit hard by his beauty and understood the reason why Su Tao was so devoted to him. However, she did not dare to have any other plans for the person she liked. She just nodded politely and turned back. As soon as Su Tao followed Li Xiao out of the teaching building, the phone in her buttocks rang, which Su Tao was familiar with. The Drunken Butterfly When she was at home, she often listened to Su Mu play this song, and Su Mu even waved her hands and danced along. Su Tao was forcibly pulled over and joined once, but no matter how many times Su's mother taught her, her limbs became as stiff as those newly installed. Su's mother could only shake her head and sigh, this softness and resilience have not been inherited by me at all. After listening to Li Xiao respond three times in a row, he hung up the phone and Su Tao waited quietly on the side. 
I have some last-minute matters to attend to at the academic affairs office. Next, you have to go by yourself. The new student is at the south gate. She obediently responded, Okay, teacher, you can go. Li Xiao took a few steps before remembering that he hadn't told her about his new classmate's appearance, but when he looked back, Su Tao had already walked far away. There are many people coming and going on campus during the break, but the school gate can only be accessed with a leave notice. Su Tao walked around the comprehensive building and as soon as she looked up, she saw the person standing at the school gate. He has a slender figure, wearing the school uniform of Yunha No. 1 High School, and his wide school pants cannot block his straight and slender silhouette. The person leaned casually against the window of the security booth, carrying a backpack on one shoulder. Although there was still some distance left, Su Tao could still see his face clearly. Half hidden under the delicate bangs, the eyes drooped low, and a shadow appeared under the high bridge of the nose. The thin lips pursed lightly, and just one side face exuded a gloomy coldness. At exactly ten o'clock, the clock in the tower rang on time, and the distant sound echoed through the campus. The person lifted their eyes as if feeling something and looked in her direction. Su Tao was caught off guard and caught the line of sight. Deep and indifferent, beneath the pitch-black eyes, there were still faint fluctuations of obscure emotions. End of this chapter Chapter 5 I Can't Eat People You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 I Can't Eat People All sounds are silent, the bell tolls long. When she ran away on a rainy night and was hit by a car, the person who stumbled towards her now coincided with his face little by little. It turned out to be him, Jiang Qihui, the elite who will become the CEO of the group in the future, and the person with a gloomy temperament now cannot find any similarities. The words, Su Su, please take a look at me, echoed in Su Tao's ear, as if her heart was pressed down by a heavy stone, suffocating and suffocating one after another. But why would he be sad for her death? In a daze, Jiang Qihui had already walked towards her, with a hint of melancholy between his eyebrows and eyes, and a hint of profound meaning. Are you the monitor of class 18, Su Tao? His voice is different from the rough, low mellow and seductive voice of boys in the period of voice change, clear and lazy. Hello, Jiang. Su Tao only realized when she spoke that her voice was trembling, almost biting off the base of her tongue. Jiang Qihui sneered lightly, don't be nervous, I don't know how to eat people. Su Tao didn't know how to face him for a moment, so she hurriedly turned around and said, I'll take you to the academic affairs office to handle the admission procedures. The homeroom teacher happens to be there. Jiang Qihui was very tall and stood casually beside her, blocking the scorching sunlight. Su Tao's footsteps paused slightly, suddenly remembering the present day of her past life, where no one was shading her, only the endless scorching sun was scorching her. Perhaps it was before her death that Su Tao felt the passionate emotions of Jiang Qihui, whether he stood in the direction of the sunlight intentionally or unintentionally, that she felt a sense of unease. She clearly remembers that she had no contact with Jiang Qihui in her past life, so where did his love for her come from? Su Tao tried her best to flip through her past memories and confirmed that she had not seen him before. Su Tao, be careful with the pole. A sudden sound beside her pulled back her drifting thoughts. Is this person too frivolous when they first meet and call them little sweethearts? The next second, she collided with the street lamp post, and the recoil made her take a few steps back in a row. The street lamp post shook a few times due to a sudden collision, and the buzzing sound of metal lasted for several seconds before calming down. But the sound of electric current in Su Tao's mind had not dissipated yet, and she held on to her forehead, tears streaming down her physiological pain. Jiang Qihui stopped and looked at her with a smile on his face, didn't he say to be careful? Turns out he was talking about the pole, not the liver. Su Tao felt ashamed of her narcissism and raised her hand to cover her face with her sleeve, casually wiping away her tears. When she showed her face again, she still couldn't stop her bright red eyes. Jiang Qihui's eyes darkened a bit, 
and when he looked up and saw the red mark in the middle of his forehead, he couldn't help but chuckle. Sensing the position he was looking at, Su Tao quickly turned around and took out the small mirror that Chen Weima had inserted into her to take a look. Her skin is fair and tender, and it is easy to leave marks when touched, especially when the force of the collision is not small, to the point where it does not disappear even after half a minute. Su Tao awkwardly covered her forehead and pretended to calmly shift the topic, sorry, I just lost my mind. Passing through this teaching building again will be the comprehensive building. Jiang Qihui lifted his chin lightly and said, thank you. She was so nervous that she dared not speak all the way, but the person next to her remained indifferent. Jiang Qihui lowered his eyes and looked at the shadows of the two people on the ground. As the angle of the sunlight changed, the shadows gradually overlapped. When looking sideways, one could just see her snow-dot-white neck, with a few strands of fine hair casually sticking to it. It was clearly a little cat waving its teeth and claws, but now it acted like a startled deer, without any of the boldness it had when it first met. It seems that she doesn't remember herself anymore, on the contrary, she avoids it as if she has seen a raging beast. When Su Tao saw the nameplate of the academic affairs office, she felt for the first time that the place that the students regarded as hell was like heaven. Li Xiaoxian finished listening to the task assigned by the teaching director and breathed a sigh of relief when he saw the two of them coming over. I thought you couldn't find anyone. Su Tao said truthfully, he is the only one at the school gate. Li Xiao, who has always been meticulous in his smile, showed a friendly smile when facing Jiang Qihui and said, Jiang, come and fill in your personal information. Jiang Qihui took off his backpack, held it with one hand in his right hand, and took the pen with his left hand. Su Tao hesitated whether to help him with his things, but Li Xiao first spoke up and said, Su Tao, help the new classmate with his backpack. She secretly slandered, didn't he have handwritten words? Despite all her inner displeasure, she obediently extended her hand. Jiang Qihui lifted her hand and she fell into nothingness. There's no need to trouble the female classmate to help with this kind of thing. Li Xiaoxian chuckled twice and said, she is the class monitor, serving her classmates is just right. The class monitor is a person, not a classmate's ox or horse. Jiang Qihui put down his pen, I've filled it out. Su Tao quietly looked at the table, only her name and gender were filled in, and the rest were blank. The teaching director frowned and reminded, Jiang, your home address has not been filled in yet. Jiang Qihui answered lightly, I don't have a home. The office fell into silence. Li Xiao coughed first and said, then go back to the classroom first. Then he instructed Su Tao, Su Tao, take him over. Su Tao now feels like a little eunuch being manipulated everywhere, Li Xiao was an emperor commanded by Yi Qi, and Jiang Qihui was a beloved crown prince. Under the gaze of the two behind them, Su Tao left the academic affairs office with Jiang Qihui. Just arrived at the bottom of the teaching building and met Yui Zhou who hurriedly went downstairs. When he saw Jiang Qihui beside Su Tao, his face darkened, but he quickly regained his usual gentleness and reached out to Jiang Qihui. Is this the new classmate? Hello, I am Yui Zhou, the study committee member of class 18. Jiang Qihui glanced blankly, didn't reach out, and even put it into his pocket in front of his face. End of this chapter Chapter 6 A Master with Deep Skills and Fame You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 A master with deep skills and fame this was a blatant provocation from a boat, and Su Tao looked on and felt relieved. But she still pretended to give Yui Zhou a step down and said, Jiang is quite introverted, I understand. So it's like this. Yui Zhou withdrew his hand, with a smile on his face that didn't diminish. Only Su Tao knew he was covering up his embarrassment with a fake smile. Yu Ijo has been with him for seven years, and she knows him best. She is proud and jealous. Su Tao, since the new classmate has already received it, will you join me in queuing up at the Sunrise Bookstore? 
Upon hearing him almost speaking to herself in a tone of notification, Su Tao instinctively frowned. Although it's a bit more human than letting her cue alone in her previous life, her words still cannot change the ridiculous arrogance in her bones. Jiang Qihui lifted his backpack over his shoulder and spoke casually, Sorry, I don't know the way to class 18. I need the class monitor to guide me. Noticing his intention, Yui Zhou's first impression of Jiang Qihui fell to freezing point, and his voice sank slightly. It's on the second floor, the second classroom after climbing the stairs. Lu Qi, I can't understand. Jiang Qihui only straightened his back slightly, which was slightly higher than Yui Zhou in front of him. Just in terms of momentum, he overwhelmed Yui Zhou. In addition, with his obvious flaws yet convincing lies, Yui Zhou's eyebrows twitched violently, but years of disguise quickly suppressed his dissatisfaction. Yui Zhou, there's no need to make it difficult for transfer students, Su Tao spoke in a timely manner. The task assigned to me by the class teacher is to receive him. The task is not yet completed until I personally lead him to the classroom. Did you hear that? Jiang Qihui raised his eyebrows lightly, and the natural appearance standing next to Su Tao pricked Yui Zhou's eyes. It's true that the class monitor serves classmates, but not your personal servant. Su Tao looked up at him in surprise. In her impression, Jiang Qihui had always been a quiet and quiet person sitting in a corner. If it weren't for his overly eye-dot catching appearance, it would be difficult for anyone to notice him. But he spoke for someone he only saw for the first time, and Su Tao couldn't help but think of the scene in her past life where she was tightly held before her death, her heart twitching. Is it true that Jiang Qihui fell in love with her at first sight? Yui Zhou's expression was tense as he looked at Jiang Qihui with a mocking look in his eyes. Jiang, this is a private matter between me and Su Tao. It's not your turn to intervene, he said although Su Tao wanted to reject him again, it was not yet the time to make him suspect. She suppressed the surging disgust in her heart and when she looked up again, her face returned to a calm state. Okay, I'll take him up first. I have already explained the location very clearly, he can't possibly not understand, Yui Zhou said. For some reason, he couldn't control his emotions after Jiang Qihui appeared, and his tone couldn't help but become impatient. You let him go up on his own. Yui Zhou. Su Tao took a deep breath and suddenly called out his name. Yui Zhou inexplicably panicked and his expression softened. What's wrong? If it were Su Tao from a previous life, with just a gentle and caring gaze, he would be able to let go of all her self-esteem and meet his demands regardless of anything. But Su Tao now feels more and more hypocritical and nauseous, and the piercing pain of his fingertips embedded in her flesh makes her rational return. She asked in a low voice, can't we just wait for a while? In her past life, she pursued him for three years. Clearly with a calm gaze, Yui Zhou's heart tightened as if he were a prey being targeted by a hunter, and his back felt a chill. His face turned a little pale unconsciously, but his tone softened a bit. I'll wait for you, he said Su Tao turned around and said, Jiang, let's go. Jiang Qihui took a long leg and followed her in just a few steps. Chen Weima saw Su Tao coming back and waved his hand to the several boys gathered around him to step down. She stood up in surprise and headed straight to the classroom door to greet Su Tao, Peach, haven't you met Yui Zhou? When Chen Weima caught a glimpse of the person behind Su Tao, he froze in a daze. Sleeping. Sleeping trough. Su Tao closed her slightly open chin for a long time and said, let me introduce you. He is the transfer student in our class, Jiang Qihui. Chen Weima immediately smiled and warmly extended his hand, hello handsome guy. Jiang Qihui lowered his gaze and glanced at the hand that was so excited that it trembled faintly, but it remained motionless for a long time. Just now, Yui Zhou was feeling embarrassed about shaking hands and greeting her. Su Tao didn't want Chen Weima to be embarrassed, and was about to explain that Jiang Qihui was introverted when he shook her hand back. Chen Weima only felt the warm and cool touch linger on the back of his hand for a moment before dissipating, 
and in surprise, he secretly grabbed Su Tao's wrist. Su Tao's stunned thoughts were pulled back by Chen Weimar's strength, Momo, could you please take him to his seat? Yu Ijo is still waiting for me downstairs. Oh, good. Chen Weima smiled clearly, it seemed that Peach's strategy of playing hard to get was quite useful. Watching Su Tao's figure disappear at the corner of the stairs, Chen Weima happily withdrew his gaze and turned around with a smile, Jiang, I'll take you. Hey, where's the person? She looked into the classroom and saw that Jiang Qihui had already gone to the corner by the window on his own. The back row is by the window, Wang's hometown. It seems like a master who has hidden his achievements and fame. When Yu Ijo saw Su Tao come down, his anxious mood gradually calmed down. The bookstore is quite far from here, let's take a taxi there. As always, I don't ask for her opinions and always make my own decisions. Su Tao lowered her eyes and frowned, without any objection. Okay, the fare is AA. Upon hearing the latter half of the sentence, Yuijo stopped in his footsteps. But usually. She usually pays the bill. Su Tao pretended to be puzzled, but I was accompanying you, shouldn't AA? She curved her eyes and smiled, or are you willing to pay the full fare? That's really thank you, you're so kind. Yuijo was given a good person card before he could even afford to pay his respects, leaving him speechless for a moment. The suffocating sensation in his heart made him extremely uncomfortable. He secretly reached into his pocket and only found a thin banknote, which was 50 yuan given to him by his grandmother in the morning. It takes about 10 minutes by taxi from here to the Sunrise Bookstore. However, prices in Yuncheng are relatively high, with a starting price of 5 yuan and a round dot trip fare of about 20 yuan. And the novel he had been longing for, priced at 35, was still a little short no matter how it was calculated. Yuijo didn't have time to calculate, so Su Tao had already stopped a taxi. She opened the door of the passenger seat first and sat in, looking at Yuijo, who was still staring at the roadside. Get in the car. Isn't she usually eager to sit next to him? He said in a deep voice, no one has ever reminded you, is it best for girls to take a taxi in the back seat? Sorry. Su Tauli got off the car. You can take the front seat. Yuijo noticed that Su Tao was a bit strange today, but her attitude towards herself was as enthusiastic as usual, but she felt that the initiative was unconsciously in her hands. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Umbrella is too small and inconvenient. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 7 Umbrella is too small and inconvenient the driver impatiently urged, young man, can't you get on the car? The little girl has already given you the passenger seat. Can you stop being so pretentious? Yu Ijo regained his senses and smiled apologetically, sorry, I'm getting on the car right now. He originally wanted to sit in the back, but both Su Tao and the driver forced him into the passenger seat. Su Tao observed Yuijo's expression through the rearview mirror with great interest. His gentle and elegant face was particularly calm, but she saw a surge of anxiety in his eyes. Very good, he is already in a hurry. But with his always calm temperament, he will find a way to regain the initiative in his own hands. However, Su Tao is not in a hurry. She has been with Yuijo for seven years. Although he often conceals things from himself, she is sensitive and still captures many details. For example, his one-dot-way emails sink into the sea, and he sends his favorite books to an address every year, or they disappear on a fixed day every year. She chose to bury herself in self-woven lies, believing that as long as she persisted, she would always move him, and only before she died did she know that his heart was not warm. To be precise, only Ning Shushue can cover the heat. Without her and the support of the Su family in this lifetime, he will no longer have the same smooth sailing as before. Here it is, 15 yuan, cash or scan the QR code. Su Tao's drifting thoughts were pulled back by the driver's deep question. 
With a slight lift of her eyes, she saw Yui Zhou holding out a green 50 yuan banknote with a slightly tense face. The driver exerted some effort before pulling out the banknote. Smoking was not allowed in the car, so he had to hold a toothpick in his mouth. The toothpick bounced from left to right, followed by the master's contemptuous complaint. You're so stingy searching for a $50 bill. Su Tao leaned onto the back of the seat, poked her head out, and explained in a low voice, Master, my classmate is from a poor family. Please understand. The driver's gesture of changing money stopped, and a rare hint of guilt appeared on his face. I'm sorry, he said on the surface, Su Tao looked for steps for Yuijo, but the latter felt a deeper sense of humiliation. She clearly knew that the last thing she wanted to mention was her family background. After getting off the car, Su Tao felt as if she had just realized it and sincerely apologized with her hands clasped together, sorry, I forgot for a moment. It's okay, you're also unintentional. The driver is just a stranger, and there won't be any chance to see him again in the future, Yui Jo forced out a smile Su Tao sneered inwardly. What he cared most about was face in front of strangers, and now he was pretending to be quite indifferent. Without taking two steps, I saw the end of the team at a glance and took several turns along the long street like a dragon. Yui Jo frowned and sighed lightly, it's still late. Su Tao pretended to comfort him and said, it's okay, queuing up is just for the purpose of receiving the number. Even the last one has a chance to win the lottery and qualify for purchase. Yui Jo said in a very natural tone of notification, can you help me queue up first? I didn't eat in the morning and wanted to go back and buy breakfast. Su Tao really wanted to slap him in the face, asking for help was not polite at all. She used to bring him breakfast, but today's one was ruined by her anger. Su Tao knew that he was just trying to be lazy, so she pretended to be understanding and nodded with a smile, okay, you go. She watched as Yui Zhou's figure disappeared at the end of the street, then withdrew from the queue and leisurely went to the sugar shop across the street to buy a cup of mung bean soup to drink. Su Tao sat under the sunshade umbrella, watching the long line of turtles move quickly, enjoying the last sip before slowly getting up. When Yui Zhou returned, he found Su Tao still in the previous position and couldn't help but wonder, has the team never moved? Su Tao spoke particularly sincerely, there are too many people. Although he felt that the people before and after seemed different from when he just met, he still dispelled his doubts. The third class is physical education, and the physical education teacher is an elderly semi-retired old man who has almost no temper. He only allows them to move freely in his daily life, which is why Yui Zhou dares to be so openly absent from class. Su Tao felt sorry for the kind-looking physical education teacher for three seconds, but she still enjoyed taking a break from her busy schedule. The team moved forward for a distance, and Su Tao stood under the eaves under the exposure of the sun. She opened the sunshade she had just bought from the store and covered her head, blocking the scorching sun from coming towards her. Yui Zhou asked in a daze, when will you? Su Tao remembered when she got on the car, she was empty-handed, and the umbrella was bought by hand when she just went to make mung bean soup. She told a lie without changing her expression, just now there was a boy who panicked when he saw me sunbathing. He kindly gave me a gift. Su Tao, who used to have no reservations about Yi Zhou, was a bit nervous when lying in front of him for the first time. Yui Zhou frowned in displeasure and said, don't casually accept gifts from strangers, especially from boys. If you don't have anything to do, be attentive and either cheat or steal. Su Tao secretly slandered and was really lenient in her management. She looked down helplessly and said, I'm sorry, my skin is tender and I can't sunbathe. Su Tao has a bright and beautiful appearance, but her eyebrows and eyes are particularly soft, her apricot eyes are full, and the light red mole under her eyelids is seductive. Her fine eyebrows furrow slightly in embarrassment. Yui Zhou's heart inexplicably softened upon seeing it, and the energy in his heart instantly dissipated. It's okay, it's just that I didn't think carefully. The sun is indeed a bit too hot today, even I feel hot. 
His words were very suggestive, but Su Tao didn't understand, and her white face under the umbrella nodded in agreement, hmm. Yui Zhou couldn't hold back and spoke frankly, let me help you hold on. His hand was about to reach out, and Su Tao instinctively took a step back. Yui Zhou could clearly see the panic flashing in her eyes. She had just mistaken the scene of Yui Zhou approaching with a knife in her past life, and a moment of panic surged in her heart. Yui Zhou's hand stiffened in mid-air, and he instinctively withdrew it. His voice softened and he said, did you scare me? Su Tao's eyes regained focus, and seeing his concerned expression, she almost couldn't control her disgust. She took a deep breath before calming down. The umbrella is too small and inconvenient. Yui Zhou was a bit incredulous. In the past, she should have happily handed her umbrella to herself. He only assumed that his sudden behavior had frightened Su Tao, and a rare sense of guilt arose. Su Tao turned over with her umbrella on her back, unconsciously gripping the handle tightly. The cruel expression on Yui Zhou's face when he cut her mole is still vivid in her mind. She has wanted to ask him countless times. Why did her seven years of companionship turn into a joke because of Ning Xuxue's return to China? But when she stroked the end of her eyes, she still stubbornly held back. When everything has not yet fallen to the most tragic point, she still has a chance to get rid of the ending of her previous life. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Writing an IOU You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Writing an IOU Half an hour later, Yuijo finally saw the staff at the front of the team distributing number plates. Even though he is usually not afraid of the heat, he is now sweating profusely from the sun. On the other hand, Su Tao in front was refreshing and refreshing, with no trace of being tormented by the sun. Su Tao saw Yu Ijo through the wide dot angle mirror at the intersection, who was constantly exhaling to dissipate heat. She thought of how dogs would also use their tongues to dissipate heat, and couldn't help but laugh out loud. Noticing the gaze cast by the person behind her, she turned half of her face and lightly lifted the corner of her mouth, saying, I'm glad it's our turn soon. I don't think you're like a dog. Su Tao remembers that the number she received last time was 825, which was the last number eligible for purchase. When it was Su Tao's turn, the staff handed her the number plate 888. Little sister, you're lucky, it's a lucky number. Even the staff's tone showed envy. Su Tao smiled and said, it still depends on the number drawn in the end. When a beautiful woman smiles, everything loses its color. The staff was stunned for a while, then blushed unconsciously. As a girl, she even blushed at the sight of girls. Su Tao, aware of the attractiveness of her face, consciously stood in a remote corner, not wanting to attract attention. Yui Zhou had just received the number plate and wanted to find Su Tao, but he saw that she was already surrounded by several boys who were trying to approach her. A wave of impatience surged in my heart and I walked towards her quickly. Stay away from her. The angry warning startled the few boys. Seeing that the newcomer was still a handsome guy with a good appearance, the few people shook their heads with regret and said, so I have a boyfriend now, it's really a pity. Upon hearing this title, Yuijo's furrowed brow relaxed happily. Su Tao spoke out in a timely manner, I misunderstood. He's just my classmate. A few people's expressions immediately became disdainful, and a man with a big gold chain around his neck looked at him contemptuously through his nostrils. So it's a beautiful licking dog, what's so arrogant? Lick the dog. Yui Zhou frowned in displeasure, knowing that this title was only suitable for Su Tao Dai. Su Tao's ways of pleasing him are endless. Every time he refuses with a smile, she can be happy for the whole day or even the next time with even higher spirits to please him. Su Tao, who had always been the first to come out and protect his face, stood under the eaves like an outsider, watching the scene with a smile on her face. She just stood there with a smile on her face, doing nothing to attract the attention of countless people. Yui Zhou was a bit taken aback when he forgot that Su Tao was also recognized as the school flower of number one middle school. 
and such a beauty, however, only falls in love with him. Thinking of this, Yuijo felt a strong sense of pride and had the confidence to face the ridicule of the golden chain man. Yuijo is accustomed to maintaining demeanor in front of outsiders, even when mocked, he responds with a smile. In my opinion, your behavior is essentially no different from licking a dog. He has a gentle and elegant face, yet speaks aggressive words. The golden chain man frowned, obviously angry, and swung his fist as if warning, say it again. Su Tao sighed inwardly, and Yu Ijo was indeed a skilled level player who could pretend. He even said he couldn't break the defense even if he licked his dog. If we continue to observe, this golden chain man may actually take action. She spread the umbrella open, and the umbrella surface, unintentionally, pushed Yuijo. The lottery has started, let's go over. The golden chain man chased after him and shouted, Beauty, can you leave a contact information? Su Tao reported the name of the person who had always regarded her as her arch nemesis, only vocational high school, In Zinru. Yuijo followed her and frowned, asking, Is it a bit excessive to give someone else's name? Why, does you want me to be implicated by thugs? Su Tao still smiled warmly, but Yu Ijo felt a chill. It's clear that In Zingru and I haven't had any grudges, but she spreads rumors about me everywhere at Amway Vocational High School, using extremely unpleasant language. I'm just giving her a peach blossom, why is it too much? Su Tao still remembers that in her past life, Yuijo listened to rumors and came specifically to question whether she was as obedient and composed as In Zengruo said in school, and came to smoke and drink privately. Her first reaction at the time was to feel aggrieved and angry, and she asked him why he would rather believe in someone else's self than his girlfriend whom she had been with for four years. Little sister, you have hit the number in your hand. A kind-hearted girl next to her spoke out as a reminder. Su Tao regained her senses and smiled at her, thank you for the reminder. Yu Ijo was even more urgent than Su Tao, and his tone unconsciously added a reminder. You go in quickly. She only said hello and entered the bookstore. When Su Tao came out with a book, Yu Ijo eagerly welcomed her and was about to reach out when she lifted her hand and shifted her position. She seemed puzzled, what's wrong? Yu Ijo frowned irritably shouldn't you give it to me? Oh, do you want this book? Su Tao suddenly said, I don't happen to read novels. As a classmate, I'll give you the original price. Sell it to me. He had a rare expression of surprise on his face. I spent money, of course I can't give it away for free, she blinked and Xinyan smiled with an unclear meaning. Classmates should be more transparent in their accounts, right? Yuijo's eyebrows twitched and he took a deep breath to calm his emotions. Okay, how much is it? Su Tao reached out and said, 40. He paused as he touched his pocket and said, isn't it priced at 30.5? She raised her lips and said, the extra 5 yuan is my hard.earned fee. After all, my account has been eligible for purchase and I have been waiting in line with you under the scorching sun. I didn't charge much. Did I? Yuijo asked in a deep voice, When did we get separated like this? Su Tao felt it was ridiculous and coldly tugged at the corner of her mouth. If you insist on getting involved, I'm just a passionate classmate pursuing you, she said. Yuijo subconsciously mocked, Do you still know you're chasing me? Immediately realizing that the tone was too heavy, the voice softened and said, I didn't mean that. What do you mean? Su Tao's eyes turned red as she sincerely felt aggrieved for her humble self in her past life. Should I lower myself to you because I'm chasing you? Su Tao, Yu Ijo sighed with a headache, don't always think recklessly. This book is very important to me, so could you please be more serious? Su Tao resisted the urge to throw the book at his face and felt sorry for the money she had spent, so she persevered. I'm quite serious, she blinked her sour eyes. That's the price. For the first time, Yuijo felt that Su Tao was making trouble without reason, and his tone lost his usual patience. I don't have so much money now, can I owe it for now? 
She didn't want to lose out either, okay, write an IOU. Can't you trust me for being so serious? Yu Ijo relaxed as he looked at Su Tao's resolute expression. All right. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Suddenly came to my senses. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 9 Suddenly came to my senses. Su Tao borrowed a pen and paper from the staff at the bookstall and watched as Yu Ijo finished writing the IOU and signed his name before handing the book to him. As expected, he took the book without even saying goodbye and hurried straight to the opposite side of the road. Su Tao stood under the brightly lit sign, quietly watching his figure disappear on the street corner. She reached out to stop a taxi and said, Master, go to Beichuan No. 1 Middle School. Sun Xiangyi saw Su Tao enter from the entrance of the playground, and his slightly arched back straightened in surprise. Su Tao, are you feeling unwell? The first reaction was not to think she was absent from class, but to worry about her physical condition. Su Tao has been absent from physical education classes for the past two years, only showing her face during the roll call at the beginning of class. As soon as she disbanded, she would take Chen Weima to the convenience store or help Yui Zhou run errands and deliver water. She felt a little ashamed for a moment, and her fingers twisted uneasily behind her. Chen Weima saw Su Tao with sharp eyes and ran over, saying in a timely manner, Oh right teacher, class monitor, she just went to the restroom with a stomachache. The weather has been hot lately, so be careful not to eat anything too cold, Sun Xiangyi waved his hand. Let's go rest under the shade of the trees. Chen Weima pulled Su Tao to stand under the secluded shade of a tree and looked at the entire playground. Where's Yui Zhou? Aren't you with him? Su Tao's reaction was calm. Oh, after he received the book, he left silently. What kind of person? He asked you to accompany him, and it was him who left you behind. Chen Weima instinctively cursed a few times, realizing that Su Tao had never heard anything bad from Yui Zhou. He quickly changed his mind and said, he might just be overjoyed and forget about you for a moment. Su Tao held her hand and lifted her eyelids. Her clear eyes were particularly serious, at the end, I don't want to like Yui Zhou anymore. Ah. Chen Wei Ma leaned in front of her incredulously, I didn't hear you wrong, did I? Chen Wei Ma probed Su Tao's forehead and said, I don't have a fever. Why did I suddenly feel like having a fever? Su Tao looked up at the fine sunlight shining through the crack in the tree and squinted. When I was a child, my filter broke, so I didn't like it anymore, she said although Yui Zhou saved her when she was a child, she has already given back enough in the past two years. Finally, when you wake up, Chen Weima was about to burst into tears of joy, judging him without hesitation. Yui Zhou always accepts your kindness without giving you a clear response, and even gives you a good person card to make you willing to continue treating him well. Su Tao quieted down. She actually knew that Chen Weima had been secretly reminding her that Yui Zhou was not a serious person, but she was always immersed in her own cognition, and Chen Weima eventually gave up persuasion. So much so that when Chen Weima heard the news of her marriage in her previous life, she didn't look happy and forced a smile to say congratulations. Su Tao picked up Chen Weima's face and said solemnly, Momo, you see other boys have such a sharp eye. Why do you pick a man yourself from the garbage dump? What are you talking about? I've been widowed for eighteen years. Besides those little brothers, which boy have you seen me interact with? Chen Weima patted her hand, that handsome guy who transferred to another school injected some new energy into my narrow social circle for many years. Su Tao raised an eyebrow in surprise and said, Why, have you already added someone else as a friend? The next second, Chen Weima's lips drooped and he said, No, he looks very unattractive. Even though he was a bit normal when you brought him over, just after the physical education class meeting, he had a gloomy expression on his face and forced many girls who wanted to approach him away. She pulled her face in despair and said, I was one of the ones who was discouraged. Su Su. There seemed to be his mournful cry in her ear, and Su Tao's heart froze as she answered in a daze, 
perhaps it's because he's not looking at you properly. Chen Weimo sat down against the trunk and said, Ah, I really want to know what kind of guy Jiang likes so that I can work hard in that direction. Su Tao wants to tell Chen Weimo that maybe Jiang Qihui likes her like this, but Chen Weimo will only feel that she is narcissistic after hearing this. Jiang Qihui just as Su Tao finished reciting his name in her heart, she casually shifted her gaze and saw a familiar figure on the basketball court behind the playground. Chen Weima immediately regained his energy and stood up, patting his buttocks regardless of his appearance. Oh, handsome guy is playing basketball. Hurry up, while the other girls haven't noticed, we need to seize the opportunity. Before Su Tao could confirm carefully, Chen Weima pulled her straight to the basketball court. Approaching noon, the sun was scorching, and within two steps, Chen Weima was so hot that a thin sweat oozed out. Su Tao saw the beads of sweat constantly oozing from her forehead, and even wanted to help her wipe them off. But Chen Weima's goal was only to play on the basketball court, and he rushed forward without caring. After stopping in the front row of the audience, Chen Weima finally found time and touched his pocket, only to find that the only napkin saved from KFC had been wiped onto Su Tao's face. He reached out to Su Tao again and indeed found a packet of unopened paper in her pocket. She opened it and cursed, you don't use his own paper to disgust him, do you? My paper is smoother than the paper in your restaurant. Su Tao snorted lightly and propped her chin to look at the person throwing the ball back and forth alone on the basketball court. Although they were all simple and old dot-fashioned white school uniforms from Beichuan No. 1 Middle School, wearing them on Jiang Qihui's body showed an unwarranted sense of mischief and evil. Su Tao has always despised the ugliness of school uniforms and has never worn them in her daily life, which is why she lies in front of that golden chain man without changing her face. Yui Zhou doesn't like to wear clothes, but the teachers consider his good grades and let him go. Noticing Chen Weima's movements beside her, she turned her face halfway and sneered, What are you doing? Chen Weima gestured with his hand to the camera, the school doesn't allow mobile phones, so I'll have to remember these handsome pictures with my eyes. Then she saw something, her eyes suddenly widened, and she vigorously shook Su Tao's arm, quick. Look. Following her gaze, Jiang Qihui made a jump shot and lifted his clothes high. From their perspective, they can just see the thin waistline. Chen Weima's eyes lit up and he said, How did you say that? Brother's waist is not his waist, it's the curved sword that killed San Lang. Su Tao spoke seriously and said, I think his legs are also good. When I went to pick him up, he stood by the security booth with his waistline higher than the window. Chen Weima nodded solemnly and said, The combination of spring water by the Seine River and the curved sword of the deadly San Lang makes people drool. Perhaps their eyes were too hot but after a precise three-dot point shot landed, the person turned to look over. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Is indeed a pretense. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Is indeed a pretense Su Tao immediately covered her face as if stealing a bell. She felt Chen Weima's body instantly straighten and excitedly and nervously whispered, He's coming over. Why don't you continue to look? The footsteps echoed from far to near, and finally stopped in front of Su Tao, with a faint chuckle echoing above her head. Su Tao quietly looked up at him through her fingertips, the person holding the basketball with one hand, and the orange headband on her forehead lifted up her long bangs, revealing clear eyes. Jiang Qihui's eyes were clearly good dot looking, as bright as a Milky Way when looking directly at people. But he hardly looks at people directly, and once he raises his eyes, it becomes a contemptuous posture. Su Tao had a panic that the tyrant was staring at her and was about to be dragged out and beheaded the next second. Chen Wei Ma helped her take her hand away and reminded her seriously, Peach, don't touch your eyes with your hands, it's easy to get infected. So Su Tao's guilty face was suddenly exposed completely in front of Jiang Qihui. Chen Wei Ma's hand, which had been resting on her wrist, unconsciously increased in strength. Su Tao knew that her habit of exerting force when she was excited had recurred, and she frowned slightly in pain. 
Jiang Qihui patted the ball a few times and spoke lazily, I didn't even see you being wronged when the discussion was hot just now. Is it reasonable to be wronged now? Did he hear it? But obviously, their voices are not very loud Chen Weima quickly turned his head to look at Su Tao's expression, his eyes really dyed a little red, and he looked like he was about to cry. He secretly admired how her peach could whiten himself with softness. Su Tao did feel a bit like crying, but she was caught by Chen Weimo. Can this little girl be a little lighter in strength? Jiang Qihui lowered his eyes and glared at her slightly red circles, then stopped his hand movements and threw the ball aside. He stepped up the stairs with one foot, leaned forward, and leaned closer to her. Chen Weimo exclaimed and let go of his hand, Wow! The force that imprisoned Su Tao finally loosened, and she even breathed more smoothly. Seeing her expression relax, Jiang Qihui turned straight back and clearly curled his lips, Oh, it's really a show. Su Tao has decided to retract Jiang Qihui's idea of secretly falling in love with her. No one would mock their beloved in person like this. She must have overlooked some details in her previous life, which made her mistakenly believe that Jiang Qihui had liked her for many years. Su Tao, who has always been confident in her memory, fell into self-doubt for the first time in her life. Did she really remember wrong? In fact, she had seen him in her past life later. Peach, Peach. Chen Weima whispered to her, Why have you been constantly distracted lately? When Su Tao regained his senses, Jiang Qihui had already returned to the basketball court, and the surrounding audience was filled with people, mostly girls, at some point. She looked around in a daze and said, When? TSK, you don't know. Chen Weima lowered his voice. Just now, the basketball court was shaking and a group of girls were running crazy here like they had been widowed for thirty years. Su Tao hesitated and said, Why didn't I notice such a big commotion? Chen Weima pouted contemptuously, You didn't just look foolish at Jiang Qihui, did you? You don't even know what you did. Did she have the habit of acting recklessly when she was distracted? Su Tao was skeptical and uncertain. Did I just do something to Jiang Qihui? No, it's just that you've been staring at him all the time. He left in no time, and he seemed to be in a good mood, Chen Weima rubbed his chin and thought for a moment before suddenly realizing. So you don't like Yu Zhou anymore because you're in a different relationship. She continued to analyze with great seriousness, Jiang Qihui is indeed much more handsome than the fishing king Yu Zhou. Although his temperament may seem a bit strange, there is still a chance for him to be saved if he is well cultivated. Fishing King Upon hearing this novel title, Su Tao couldn't help but chuckle softly. You're really a genius who uses nicknames. After there were more people on the basketball court, many boys from class 18 also came to join Jiang Qihui in a game. He instinctively wanted to refuse, but as soon as he glanced, he caught a glimpse of Su Tao's delicate smile, with a tingling sensation in his throat. Jiang Qihui threw the ball to the opponent and said, OK, come on. Su Tao watched quietly as Jiang Qihui skillfully threw one after another, and screams echoed around him. In his past life, Jiang Qihui had never received such treatment. Although he noticed that there were many people with outstanding looks, his overly cold temperament made people only dare to look far away and not approach. But now, since she went to pick up Jiang Qihui, his life trajectory seems to be starting to change bit by bit. Perhaps liking her is different from her past life. With this thought, Su Tao's psychological burden, which had been under pressure for a long time, was greatly reduced. Chen Weima noticed a girl in the audience arrogantly taking out her phone to take a photo, gritting her teeth with jealousy. I want to take down their faces and report them to their homeroom teacher. There's no need to destroy it without using it. If you want a photo of Jiang Qihui, you can ask them for it, Su Tao followed her gaze and scanned around. I've written it down for you. If they don't give it, report it. Chen Weima gave a thumbs up and said, Peach, you're ruthless. Su Tao sighed helplessly, I asked you to read more books and not listen. 
you didn't even use an idiom correctly. Starting today, let's learn together. If you don't meet the task, I'll punish you for eating less snacks for one day. Why are you so clear-headed when you don't like Yuijo? Chen Weima hugged Su Tao's arm and burst into tears. Why don't you continue to like him? As soon as Yuijo's name was mentioned, Su Tao frowned with disgust and said, Don't, I find it disgusting. How did you go from forcing him overnight to becoming suspicious at first glance? Chen Weima's expression suddenly became solemn. Did a fairy dream to you at night to see his true face? Su Tao lowered her eyes with a gloomy expression. If it weren't for Yu Ijo's personal recognition, giving her two seven years might not have been clear. She is truly a loser who combines a heavy love brain with licking dogs. Well, last night I dreamt that Yu Ijo was with a very beautiful girl. I woke up in the morning and didn't want to like her anymore. Su Tao's words were half true and half false, but Chen Weima believed them and hugged her with heartache, Wu Wu, our peaches are really unlucky. My previous life was indeed a difficult one, but I will never see it again in this life. She began to rummage through memories of her previous life in her mind, only to hear a reminder from the basketball court. Be careful, students in the front row. Su Tao was about to look up and see which one with poor skills had hit the ball, when the basketball flew towards her in a beautiful parabolic trajectory. She thought in despair that on her first day of rebirth, she first hit a utility pole, and now she's hit by a ball. What bad luck! Chen Weima quickly pulled Su Tao to his side, holding her head with both hands like hens protecting her cubs. The basketball didn't hit unexpectedly, and Su Tao felt the eerie silence in the audience. Chen Weima let out another, wow. End of this chapter.